It's okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So this is a, a short overview of uh, or a quick um, recount of the experiences implementing uh, uh, SONFS support in, in CENFS. My name is uh, Jan, and I'm also part of the Western Digital Research. Um, so in the, in CENFS, uh, in the current versions released, we have support for uh, bulk block device access in CENFS. Uh, we're looking into expanding the supported uh, user configurations by also adding CENFS support. One of the use cases would be, okay, we can have uh, better management of the, of the user permission settings for SonFS compared to just having the raw block device. Except it goes away, right? <laughs> <laughs> there is no permanent uh, permission settings, right? Didn't we just figure out for zone FS? So you can format, you can specify one, but if you change it runtime, it will be removed. I mean, it won't be persistent. Until so I'm mounting. No, there is one, but you can specify it, but it's for all. Oh, okay. Yeah, the so single one. You can, oh, okay. You can create a file system for a specific user with a specific set of user systems, and it's persistent, okay. but you can't change it runtime. Okay, got it. Per, I got per, it. Uh, there, per drive. Per drive. And so, all right. <laughs> and so the other, uh, the other, one of the other use cases is okay. We can have a file system instead of a, a block device. So it might be easier to use in uh, various workloads where you for containers and virtual machines where you can pass through the file system instead of your block device itself. So, and in the following, we'll take a look at what did it take to support SonFS, and uh, we'll look at some performance numbers as well. So this is the CENFS architecture as it without CENFS support. We have uh, uh, the zone management part underneath the file system and the IOs uh, subsystems for metadata and file. IO, we have the zone management. It uses uh, libcvd to do all the zone operations like finish, reset, and so on, and to obtain various device limits from the, from the block device. Also, the zone management is uh, tracking uh, open files, active files, and making sure that it stays within device limits, and doing close and reset and finish on the zones to, to make sure that uh, everything is, is good with the current device limits. And for the read and write operations, like it's basically just going directly to the, to the block device. It's using a single LPA space for, for the whole device. We can. There's some discussion earlier related to this, but I mean, this is how it works in uh, in CNFS. So, um, with the new architecture, or the new architecture, my with the rework, we uh, we added SonFS support. So, there's in CNFS, you use a URI to identify what kind of. You have questions? No, no, no problem. So. You have a URI to, to, to specify the device you want to use. So now we have a URI for a Sony test as well that specifies an output. And then we refactored the, the zone management into like a, a thin layer with all the, the abstract zone operations and then uh, like a device specific backend for one for libcdd and one for, for Sony test. And uh, if you have another favorite uh, device backend, uh, you can you can add that as well. So um, in SonFS, in the SonFS uh, <laughs> device backend, we also need to to do a conversion. And so we have, as we mentioned in the previous slide, we have a single LBA space. So all the read and write operations are part of the sort of the Son abstraction layer now. Uh, but they're using we kept the single LBA space for the other layers. So in SonFS, we now convert any read or write uh, using an LBA to a zone and offset within the zone operation. Um, and for the management, as I mentioned, we uh, zone CNFS uses uh, manages the files, uh, open files for write. And uh, as Damien mentioned earlier, you have the explicit open that where file operations like open and close file operations on, on writable files uh, translates into 
building and close up uh, of the zones themselves. So converting or supporting the operations for uh, for uh, that CNFS use for CNFS is relatively straightforward. I mean, we have this, each zone is represented as a file. If you want to reset, you truncate to size zero. If you want to finish a zone, you truncate to the zone capacity. A close is a close. And the limits on the open and active zones is uh, obtained through a combination of uh, of PROGFS and SYSFS. So this was introduced in, uh, in 2019. So what we need to do is we have the mount point. We need to figure out the block device through PROGFS. And then we use the SYSFS attributes that uh, Damien mentioned to get the open and active zone limits. You don't need a device. It's, it's per file system to per mount point SYSFS attributes. So you don't, you don't care what device it is. You shouldn't. Okay, we'll take a look at it afterwards, and, but it, it seems like that what would be needed to do anyway. Whether if it's just maybe it's simpler than that then. And then you have for the zone count, it's basically the number of files in the, in the directory. So CNFS uses a sequential zone, so it just looks at the number of files in the sec uh, directory on CNFS. And for the zone size and capacity, you can do the S that on the zone file and get that information as well. And likewise with the right pointer, it's just the current file size. So that all translates uh, pretty nicely and uh, no issues there. Then for the, the file operations, again, we have the read and write operations. You we get an LBA down and the size, we convert it to a zone and an offset, and then we need to open the zone file and read within at the offset within the zone file. So to avoid excessive open and close, we have a cache of, uh, of recently used uh, files for reads. For writes, it's a little bit different because we want to maintain the set of open files should only be the ones that are considered open or active by CNFS as well. So for the write operations, we still cache open files and then we need to close them either when we see an explicit close from uh, CNFS, or if CNFS does a reset, a finish, or it actually just fills up the zone, then we close the file and the, the resources are released by, by CNFS. And so that's basically it. Pretty straightforward. Um, so we did a little bit of performance uh, characterization as well, comparing ZoneFS with CNFS. It's using uh, the base performance suite for CNFS, which is part of the, the distribution, if you want to call it that, and uh, just using DB Bench. It's on RC 519, RC4, on a, with a digital CNS drive, 8 terabyte, with the deadline schedule enabled. And uh, we have like, three long running tests for in this uh, the performance benchmark. And for the read while writing, was actually quite a, a big difference. We'll come back to that. But uh, for the other ones, it's basically the same, and the tests are not, like, not end up having exactly the same result every time. So it's there's really no difference when you the overwrite is overwriting a set of writing and overwriting a set of keys in the in the database, the fill random is uh, just writing random key records to the to the database. The read while writing is a single thread writing data and uh, 32 threads uh, reading data at the same time. And here you can see there's uh, some performance differences. Um, and looking a little bit more into what's going on, we can see like a read latency distribution. It's slightly higher for some of us. Um, maybe the number, <laughs> I don't think the numbers are really readable on the screen, but it's. It's clearly shifted right now. <laughs> yeah. You can see the pattern, you can't see the actual numbers, but it's like uh, maybe uh, 100 uh, microseconds or 50 microseconds or so shifted up. And then there's a, but these are 
like 80, 80 million operations, like the top ones. So there are a, few, a small number of operations that have very high latencies. That's actually the problem that Damien mentioned earlier. Uh, you can't really see them here. I'm mean, here, but uh, 100 operations doesn't look like a lot when you have a compared with 80 million. So if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that, oh, that's like a, in the, in the graph, you can see the blue numbers is uh, CB, using libcvd. Uh, the red ones are with ZoneFS, and you can see that's like an extra cluster of high latency operations, about uh, a couple of hundred there. And so <laughs> it's really not that. I mean, we can basically what, uh, the, what Damien mentioned earlier, we did some profiling and figured out that, oh, this is when there's a finish operation, all the reads are blocked. It doesn't, uh, and the finish operation on the CNS SSD can take up to a couple of hundred microseconds. So you see these, when you hit that, you, you get the extra latency. It doesn't appear if you're just using CBDlib because the device itself can easily handle reads and finish at the same time. And just to verify it in a crude way, I just remove the locking on the read. <laughs> To see, okay, is it is it the only is it the only component? And as you can see, the green one is uh, is without any read locking, and it basically shifts the, the latencies back to the to the um, to the same level as CBDlib, and you also see like an increase in performance for for the benchmark as a whole. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see when we get the next version of uh, SonFS with the, that addresses this to see if we can revisit these benchmarks and see if, if uh, the performance in general gets better. So you said you see an increase, but are you, uh, does it become on par with, um, with the Roblox device or is it still lower? It's still a, a slightly lower. Okay. Yes. Well, we'll need to profile that then. <laughs> yeah, we'll need to investigate further. But uh, to see if, if uh, what's going on, but it, but you can also see for the with the on the previous slide, I don't have the the non-locking version here, but you also see a shift lower for all the latencies as well. So I mean, there's some locking overhead going on when you have that writing thread competing with uh, a bunch of reading threads, right? So it's there's something there going on for sure. So we'll see once we have a proper fix instead of. A, of, of this hack, then uh, it's going to be interesting to see how performance develops. And yeah, so it's future work is uh, to see if this result re re can be relaxed somehow. So I have a question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so why, uh, why, what's the point to switch from user space library to kernel space file system? People uh, like to use user space stuff. Avoid go into kernel space so what's the point i, I can answer that too i think so uh, damien jump in if i get this wrong so zone fs helps with the abstraction right is like someone has to reset the zones to do these things right and zone fs was uh, it's like a helper right it's not a POSIX file system right it's developed for someone to write an user space file system right and then the, you, you leverage it on top so so you you like so my question would be this right i was going to ask if you could redo it all over again, and let's say the performance was on par, is the code sort of like easier to understand and cleaner when you're using ZoneFS, right? Does it, does it like, uh, if I go look and I look at lines of code and look at the difference, I understand this stuff, like I've worked in it, right? Uh, I haven't done it yet, but just on your experience, did it become more complicated, the fact that you had to like go back and look up uh, or go go back to you take the offsets and then you cr uh, change them into files and you have like caching so you have to add these additional features kind of to be in support with uh, the zone fs model right so yeah was it a net win right in, in the end right like so so i'm kind of curious right it's i mean i think the complexity is shifting a little bit it's yes. not necessarily worse or better in terms of the code complexity i mean you have libcvds I mean, you have the extra library that you need to carry around, of course, right? But yes. other than that, it's it's not. The code itself is is pretty similar in terms of lines of code. It is okay. Uh, so, yeah. you know, I, I have played with uh, like level DB and coded that post Roblox device on FS. 
Cold, could, the amount of code is not really changing much. It's different. It's different so you, yeah. it's very subjective. You prefer one or the other. Okay. Uh, so, but back to the first question, the, the, the point of using ZoneFS in this case, I think that the main, the main benefit we can get out of it, which we don't see here yet, would be that ZoneFS uh, would provide a 100% uh, zone app and write interface. And so we can get rid of the block IO scaler. And so we, we can really unlock drive performance. Because just just having the MQ deadline in the IO pass just kills performance. Okay, I see the point. But finally, I still try to, uh, for example, say that uh, user space stuff would be more profitable because you can use, for example, IO urine. If you sure, sure but space. you can use a ring with uh, ZoneFS too. The problem, though, is uh, back to the, the performance goal here uh, of using uh, ZonaPen for all writes is that we don't have a ZonaPen interface for a Roblox device. That That's the main issue. So the only way to use ZonaPen now is through uh, ZonaFS. Well, but, once I get the asynchronous write. But patches. isn't the plan for ZonaFS to, to have buffer, like be able to use the page cache as well, right? And so uh, you, you have to go all direct with the the raw block device now right there's, there's... yeah so in, in this case it's rocks db and they do their own caching anyway so the the direct io is actually not really an issue okay so that i don't think that would impact performance that much but uh, no. zone append and the ability to remove mq deadline definitely will be yeah. uh will but be, yeah, one one thing though change. one thing about that though like so i get that like you know rocks db has its own caching right but it depends like if if you view the system as the own as the only owner of that disk, right, is is um, or, or that's like a dedicated system, right? Like page cache is great when you use multi tenant, right? Because then then it's the OS putting the pressure, right? Instead of the application hogging all the memory. So you know it's like it just no, no, depends. No. Yeah. What that use case? I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What that use case, I don't think it really matters. To okay. Direct. Okay. Right. Also, getting back to, I mean, it's not really about implementing any user space or kernel space, right? It's about doing, it's more about doing IOCTOS in a way, <laughs> or doing, or doing... Uh, so, by, by the way, you, you mentioned that you had MQ deadline enabled for ZoneFS. You should not. You should just switch to non-scheduler and see the, the, the difference uh, in performance. We, maybe we should also, I think I did try to disable it and it wasn't really, but that was with these issues as well so maybe that was skewing the performance measurements also so we can we'll see you, you know honestly speaking of this i think xnvme could be plugged into that layer too right it's like a perfect layer for it to be plugged into there okay that's it so basically straightforward to convert the performance stuff was uh, i mean it's been looked at uh, and should be better and, and, and other improvements that Damien mentioned. Hopefully we'll see even better performance in the future. And if you want to have a look at the code, it's upstream and available on uh, on GitHub for the Western you know, West NFS implementation. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right.